Dear friends, my name is Kumar. I have started my YouTube channel on SAP Success Factor Technology. After subscribing my channel, come to my channel with the click on about. You would able to see the vision of my channel. And the, before the watching my videos, the kindly subscribe my channel, like it, share it, and the click on the bell icon for all upcoming videos. And the make sure that watch my complete video for better understanding of the topics. Let's start learning together. In this video, today I am going to cover a uh, discussion again on video 1 and video 2. And today I am going to show which are the topics I am going to cover in the uh, coming videos. And also I am going to discuss about SAP SCM and the success factor. What is the difference between SAP SCM and the success factor? And today I'm going to show how we can create the super admin using the provisioning, how we can get the, the system access when you join any of the project. And also I'm going to show some basic the system navigation. So later we'll go into the in-depth discussion about uh, Core EC module. So I'm going to show one some of the world document. So as we already discussed in video and video two. Uh, it's a just a recap what we have discussed in the previous videos so i already mentioned in success factor you have the two uh, urls one for the provisioning and one for the instance so here we can see some couple of difference between the provisioning and admin center so as i already mentioned the provisioning is only accessible for the consultant and we are uploading some uh, data models and we are activating some of the language packages as for the requirement and also we are activating the functionality based on the uh, respective modules okay and coming to the admin center so i already mentioned this can be accessible by end user as well as the consultant and also we are doing the most of the configuration directly in the instance whether it could be uh, portlet related either using the mdf object okay and also we are giving the uh, access in the access is nothing but the configuring the rbp permissions okay so later we'll come to know one by one uh, this is again it's a just overview discussion so next one is so in success factor employment information is aggregated into two categories one is hr data another one is the foundation table and hr data again subdivided into two category one is personal related data another one is the employment related data so coming to foundation object so again we have segregated like what would be the company organization structure job structure and payment information okay so these are the two major difference in employment information I was mentioning about the data models so in the success factor so we have some four data models so uh, we, here we can see the five data model but here this is the old screen which I captured from the SAP so the propagation data model is absolute now so as of now we have the only three data models one is succession data model country specific succession data model corporate data model and country specific data model but however foundation object can be configured using the metadata framework also so when i was started career in 2014 so we had totally seven data model so that i will discuss the later uh, as of now we have only four data models okay so succession and country specific data model used to uh, to design the portlets okay corporate data model country specific corporate data model and uh, MDFFO used to design the structure of the company, job structure and the payment structure. Okay. And all these we can control using the role based permission. So we can give some of the access to the employee, some of the access we can give to the manager. Okay. This is just two examples, but we can configure n number of combinations. So coming to the data model. So data model. Uh, it's a basic XML coding so don't think too much about the coding just 
really I'm telling you just write in the ABCD so everything syntax will be available as per our requirement just we need to modify so I will give some two or three examples like if I want to make it a mandatory field at the print date okay so we have the syntax if you see attributes under attributes we have the required so what would be the syntax if the required equal to true then it's a mandatory field okay if you put mention as a false it's a non-mandatory fields so everyone already applying for so many jobs using the monster or no tree so you could able to see some star symbol in front of the symbol or in front of the field okay so those are the mandatory field so you have to put the some data into the respective field then only we are able to save the record or we are able to submit the request okay so here we have some it's very simple so that again we will discuss all about the in details when you are discussing the data model so so these are the some syntax uh, we have so we have something personal information or uh, hrs element so we have the uh, fields like uh, uh, personal id and uh, date of birth okay birth name and country of birth okay so uh, whatever the attributes you defined in the respective hrs element the same thing it will be replicated in the print it okay so biographical information is one of the portlet so if you see the personal id date of birth birth name country of the birth and city of birth so if you see the date of birth so date of birth here mentioned the required equal to true so because of that reason beside to that field we have the red color star symbol it means that we have to put some date in this field then only we are able to save otherwise we cannot save it okay and also if you see the field country of the birth is a pick list okay so if you see the country of the birth is a standard field okay so when you use the country of the birth as a standard field so we can be able to see all the countries in the particular drop down okay so this is how we are going to design the portlets so next one is so here we have some difference of uh, why we need to use a succession data model country specific succession data model okay so again it's uh, defining the like a personal employment information portlet and the country specific is related to if i want to capture some country specific related data okay so then i need to design those fields in the country specific data model so corporate data model and country specific data model used to design the screen for the foundation object okay so before you, if you are hiring an employee you should have the master data okay master data is nothing but like business unit division department okay so first you need to create the data in the system then only we can hire an employee into the respective division department okay so propagation leave it that is absolute now we are uh, fulfilling this requirement using the business rule in the success factor we have the configurable something called configurable business rule so this is very uh, simple and we can make it use for the complex business requirement and uh, so I, we are going to discuss that also so it is just like writing the if else conditions okay So here we can see the segregation of what are the portlets related to personal information and employment information. So if you see the employment information, job information portlet, employment information portlet, job duration, compensation information, country specific information and all captured under the employment information. The personal information which is related to the personal. So these are the whichever you can see under employment, this is all related to management or organization. So under personal information is related all the individual person related like home address, biographical information, national ID. So for US we can say we are calling it SSN number, social security number. For India we are capturing or the our PAN card like that. Those are all comes under national ID. Okay, contact information, work eligibility is nothing but whether I have the passport details, whether I have any of the H1B visa details. So those things we are capturing under working eligibility information and country specific information okay so here uh, all about the corporate data model so here corporate foundation objects are uh, 
categorized to two way okay so still some of the foundation object we are using the corporate data model model to design the script but however some of the foundation object or we are calling it mdf fo those are all configuring using the metadata framework okay so that is the reason here they have mentioned that blue color another one is the red color okay so blue color on design the screen using the mdf object okay whichever the whichever the foundation object mentioned in the red color for those we are still uh, designing using the corporate data model okay so uh, no, you no need to remember anything so when you started practicing one by one you will come to know all those things and in the system i will show how we can easily find out so which are the still we are working on foundation or uh, sorry uh, corporate data model and which are the object we are working on the mdf objects okay so these are all the some of the very key and important things you should remember okay when you are working on the enterprise central modeling okay so also uh, we have for each data model we have the dtd okay you see dtd is something like a compiler if someone work uh, writing the coding like c c++ and all they have they will be having some compiler where it will check the sanity errors whether the coding has written as per the uh, standard okay similarly so for each data model we have the dtd file so if you already experience if you know how to you know put whatever the attribute should be put under the each field either hrs element so you no need to do the any validation okay so since almost 6 or 7 years since the beginning day one i never done any validation because it's very simple okay uh, so straight away you can you uh, know uh, see all the whatever you are doing the changes straight away font you can import it if you are not confident then you have to do the validation so if you want to do the validation with the respective data model dtd as well as the your xml file should be in the same folder then only system will do the sanity check okay if any errors instead of true true should be like false prompt error if you are mentioned the t or u as all big letter system it will throw an error message this syntax is not existed in the system okay so that is nothing but dtd so it will check the uh, our uh, system configuration okay so here we have coming to foundation object so here we have organization structure pay structure and job structure so organization structure uh, these are all called as an object okay so legal entity department business unit call center so again okay, all these are concerned the organization structure okay coming to the pay structure so we have something called pay component okay pay component group payment group pay grade pay range okay these are all comes under the payment information okay so coming to the job information so job classification job function which are related to particular uh, job classification or we can say uh, job functions okay so as an employee for working for india or any country so normally they will pay some of the amount like distributing the salary into different pay components okay we can in india i can say basic hra okay one time payment like annual payment bonus all those things okay so these things payment and all we can design based on the grades okay or uh, based on the groups so for respective grade i can say like for example take grade a1 so they have something range called for either 50000 so 1 lakh so in that limit only they should able to pay the amount to the respective grade so this validation and all we can do using the payment structure so next one is yeah so this is all about which we have discussed uh, in our video 1 and 2 so now i am going to show which are all the topics to be covered uh, coming videos so i have some set of topics if you go any project so these are the repeated topics as ec content consultant whether if you are working on a support project either any of the implementation project you have to work all these uh, functionality aware some of the few functionalities which is related to optional will client can decide whether they want to go with those functionality or not okay 
so i have some set of uh, topics almost around uh, 56 i am uh, going to cover all the topics okay so which is really useful for if you are working on any support project either implementation project day day one you can able to work independently okay so that much confidence i can uh, give to you people so that uh, you can immediately start in any of the project okay so uh, like if i take some for example i'm going to discuss about data model okay country specific portlet discussion okay what is employee profile what is background element so how we can do the syncing okay what is the pick list so how we can import the employee data how, how otherwise how we can export the employee data so configure people profile so how so as already mentioned we have the standard portlets okay so how we can go with the custom portlet okay simple to complex okay so somewhere i mentioned that the creation of uh, custom portlet uh, somewhere i'm here it is there and uh, i'm going to show about the position management position management is one of the biggest uh, no, topic in employee central module so how we can make use of effectively position management that i'm going to show and i'm going to show about the uh, concurrent employment global global assignment okay so document about document generation so custom email notification so i'm whichever required for ec module so i'm going to cover all those topics so now let's uh, start a discussion on uh, difference between sap hcm and success factor okay so if uh, someone already worked on sap hcm for them is working on sap ec is very simple okay so i will tell you what are some some of the major difference and also this will be helpful for the who are the beginners in the uh, hr application okay in any of the product okay uh, in sap hcm we have something called important concept okay in the success factor we have concept called portlet okay so here we have something called action zero zero so all in SAP working based on the numbers or uh, uh, four digit number or for each uh, number we have the names okay zero zero is an action okay so zero one is an organization assignment okay in the success factor this data we are capturing in two portlets one is employment information okay so another one is the job information okay so in sap we have something called enterprise structure like uh, legal entity personal area and personal sub behavior but in the job information we have something called organization structure okay so like legal entity okay so we have some business unit division department like that okay so input type 002 use for personal information so here we have the uh, two portlets here okay so one is biographical information another one is a personal information personal info portlets okay for each and every uh, info types in the success factor we have the portlets okay so in the success factor so if you want to build any uh, logics so we can use the abapers okay so if you want to build any new functionality as per the business requirement we can uh, know, uh, upgrade the baddies and uh, but in the success factor that is not possible okay so all the requirements should be built by sorry so all the requirements should be built by sap one day so if you want to configure the workflow in SAP HCM, so we need a separate concentrate for this. But here, so EC consent only can configure the workflow. So if you want to control the system access, in SAP we need the basis guy. Okay, but again here EC consent can do the job using the functionality RBP role-based permissions 
okay so in success pack sap hcm we need the multiple resources for functional consultant we need one resource for abacus we need the coding person and for workflow we need a separate person but in success pack the all these can be handled by one person so we are the functional consultant we are the we are we are going to design the workflow we are going to configure the rpp permissions everything okay so that is the one good sign and also it's a huge burden if you are working on a big projects and all. so definitely a company they will provide the multiple resources but the one person can handle all the uh, one person can ha handle all the functionalities okay and why should do sap hcm see for example in any of the project they are implementing the ecp okay ecp is nothing but employee central payroll okay so if you are using the ecp then we need to pass the data from sf ec2 payroll system okay so when you are passing the data from ec2 payroll so you should know this difference okay so which field are available under which portlet other info types okay so if you know that one then only i can properly map in the uh, point to point integration and i can pass the employee data into the payroll system if you don't know this one then it's a bit challenge to uh, configure the field to field mapping and all those things so that is the reason if someone already worked on sap hcm working in sap it is simple but if new to the SF EC and new to the SAP HC, for them it takes little bit time to understand this info type concept and uh, EC. Okay. Uh, coming to ECP, so when you are passing the data from SF EC to payroll, we need to do configuration something called PEP. Okay. So PEP means point to point. integration okay so again i'm telling if someone already buy the license for the ecp so then we will go with point to point integration this is the sap standard integration tool okay i'm not going to discuss in detail about the, uh, this topic again this is one of the biggest topic okay just i'm giving the uh, overview on this as well okay in case if someone already implemented sf ec okay the still they are using a sap hcm on premises okay so then they can use the cloud platform integration they are calling as a cpa okay we otherwise we are calling as a s4 ana okay so otherwise we are calling as a SCA. So latest name uh, which uh, SAP provided is CPA Cloud Platform Integration. So initially they are calling as for HANA either HANA Cloud Integration. Okay. So using the CPA we can pass the data from SF EC to SAP HC. Okay. Not only for this, in case if the payroll is running any other applications. Okay. To run the payroll we need the employee data. Okay, in that case, still I can go with the CPA concept. Okay, so I can maintain all the data in the SF EC. So, okay, so employee data and data I can push it to the other any of the payroll system. Okay, so I hope you know the major difference between SAP, HCM, and EC. So, why we need to use the when you need to use the point to point integration. So, when you, you want to use the CPA. Okay, so these are some of the basic theoretical either uh, no uh, discussion about the important topics now let's go to the actual system configuration so today uh, in this video i'm going to show how we can configure create a super admin so why we need to create the super admin so when you go to any of the project the client they will share the instance details okay so if you want to log into the instance details i need the user id and password okay so that we can create ourselves using the provision so when you got the instance it is a empty box 
okay so you will not be having any access inside the instance so creating the super admin we will take all the system access okay so once you got the access then i can work on whatever the go, go i can go with all my uh, system configuration okay so let's go to the provisioning now so once you log into the system okay so click on something you'll be having the ids okay this is a demo system that is the reason i would be able to see this one but if you got any real time project they will give some numbers okay so for production they will give some numbers for development they'll give some more numbers and the provisioning they will be totally they will give the different url as well as the different company ids okay so company id is the way we uh, system is linking between provisioning and the instance so next i'm going to show how it is linked otherwise let me share it now itself so if you see here the company id thank you for watching my videos in case if you need any further information or clarification reach out to me contact detail is available on the screen and also request you to subscribe my channel for upcoming videos and also don't forget to share in your circle